भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय वेलकम टू टुडे इज रीडिंग फ्रॉम द बेसिक्स ऑफ भगवत गीता वी आर इन चैप्टर टू गॉड हुक्म करो ती वाचाल अंगुम लंग है ते गिरिम यत कृपा तम हम भक्ते श्री गुरु दीन तारिणम परमानंद माधवम श्री चैतन्य ईश्वरम so we were reading the qualities of the god i will just go through the headings once again for you so who is god he is the supreme personality of godhead we say this because he fulfills all the criteria which was mentioned earlier and the bhagavad gita and all the vedic scriptures also made sorry bear tem- ample tem- testimony to that and the definition was he is source of everything god which is an acronym for generator operator destroyer there is an invocation in ishopanishad which com- confirms that om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवा वशिष्यते देन ही इज सुप्रीम कंट्रोलर ही इज द सुप्रीम प्रोपराइटर सुप्रीम एंजॉयर ही पोजेसेस ऑल द सिक्स ऑपुलेंसेस कंप्लीट ऐश्वरस्य समग्रस्य वीरस्य वीर्यस्य यशः श्रियः ज्ञानः वैराग्य वैराग्ययोश चैव सन्नम भाग इतिंगना दिस इज फ्रॉम विष्णु पुराण that he is the beholder of all the six opulences complete full and the wrong conceptions of the god were that he is light he is force he is void everyone is god there are many gods and unfortunately some say that god is dead so so as we were saying who is god first of all he is the source of everything bhagavad gita says in 10.8 we were reading that on saturday then again in brahma samhita it says ishwara parmah krishna satchidanand vigraha anadir adir govinda sarva karana karanam this is the text one from brahma samhita he's he's truth he's full of knowledge and he is full of bliss sat chit anand and thus the form we worship vigraha when we have a murti pratishthit in the temple when we do do its pran pratishtha this is the murti we try to see with our material eyes when we worship in this uh, living life secondly he is the supreme controller krishna supreme controller bhagavad gita 9.10 it confirms it maya dikshena prakritihi shuyate na sa characharam hetu nane na konte jagat vipri vartate so we we been through all this on saturday and uh, thirdly he is the supreme proprietor of everything there's a peace formula in bhagavad gita from chapter 5 text 29 भोक्तारम यज्ञ तपसा सर्वोक महेश्वर सुहृदम सर्वूता जिनावा मं शांति रक्षति ब्रीफ्ली गिव यू द ट्रांसलेशन ऑफ दिस कज आई थिंक पीस फॉर्म्यूला अट्रैक्ट्स एवरी वन अ पर्सन इन फुल कॉन्शियसनेस ऑफ मी नोइंग मी टू बी द अल्टिमेट बेनिफिशरी ऑफ ऑल सैक्रिफाइस एंड ऑस्टेरिटीज द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड ऑफ ऑल प्लैनेट्स एंड द डेमी गॉड्स and the benefactor and well-wisher of all living entities attains peace from all pangs of material life next krishna is the supreme enjoyer he confirms that this in the chapter 9 verse 24 aham hi sarv sarv yajnanam bhokta cha prabhur eva cha 
न तो माम अभिजना अभिजानाति तत्व तत्वेना तस एव एवं एवं सॉरी चेवंति ते I am the only enjoyer and master of all sacrifices. Therefore, those who do not recognize my true transcendental nature, they fall down. This is from Bhagavad Gita, chapter nine, verse twenty-four. Next, Krishna is the father of all. Chapter fourteen, verse four from Bhagavad Gita: Sarva yoni shokante ya, murtya sambhavanti ya. तेषाम ब्रह्म महद योनीर अहम बीज प्रदाह पिता ट्रांसलेटेड इट शुड बी अंडरस्टूड दैट ऑल स्पीसीज ऑफ लाइफ और सन ऑफ कुंती आर मेड पॉसिबल बाय बर्थ इन दिस मटेरियल नेचर एंड दैट आई एम द सीड गिविंग फादर सो कृष्णा कंफर्म्स दिस एज वेल एंड नाउ वी शुड कंटिन्यू नेक्स्ट कृष्णा कृष्णा इज द सुप्रीम नोअर दिस इज कन्फर्म्ड इन चैप्टर सेवन वर्स ट्वेंटी वेदाहम समतिता वर्तमान च अर्जुन भविष्य च भूता माम तो वेदा न कश्चन ट्रांसलेटेड ओ अर्जुन एज द सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड आई नो एवरीथिंग दैट हैज हैपन इन द पास्ट ऑल दैट इज हैपनिंग इन द प्रेजेंट एंड ऑल थिंग्स दैट आर येट टू कम आई ऑल्सो नो ऑल लिविंग एंटिटीज बट मी नो वन नोज so krishna has laid everything in bhagavad gita now it's up to us to open our material eyes and the, the tiny little material brains and understandings we have been bestowed by krishna's mercy to understand him but with him in the super soul in our hearts if we do a little endeavor krishna will gradually empower us slowly more and more according to our desires and according to our thoughts i was reading this yesterday in uh somewhere was it who was it i think it was mahatma das prabhu he had written so beautifully somewhere where he was uh, describing the purity in the men uh that we are not only what we eat we are what we see what we hear what we smell and what we think so in the material world we hear this saying all the time we are what we eat but we are what we do through other gyanendriyas of ours what we see what we hear what we smell and of course what we think with our mind so krishna is all knowing he is omniscient we have unlimited knowledge but ourselves and about the material nature the little textbooks we have read in our edu- academic education at that moment we think oh we have understood a lot but we keep forgetting the people who have who are the writers of those books who have uh, built up those curriculums they were older than us of course they might have been uh, they have might have been uh, empowered with more thicker degrees or uh, Uh, more years in the academic education again mere mortals they had almost same faculties which what god have has given us okay the iq might be different or the the standard of the focus or which depends from person to person depends upon their upbringing their uh, environment the the kind of uh, ed- institution they went to study the teachers they were blessed with their family background the 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 atmosphere at home was it conducive for the studies and and their circle of friends their uh, whatever is going what was going around them culturally or uh, uh, what was happening in the world around that time everything influences and not to forget the genetics so so we start thinking that what we have learned from these uh, academic places is complete no this is just enough to let a person go by this material life just to just enough for earning livelihood and if one is uh, one is uh, born in a very good family 
uh, they don't have to work too hard because uh, but if you are born in a extremely wealthy or extremely well-to-do family then it's then it can also can be an impediment to you sometimes then you might not be uh, trying for anything for yourself or overlooking what are your inner desires uh, because you have to fulfill them in this life if you leave them unfulfilled you krishna will send you back in here that is guaranteed by krishna so the best uh, with, with with my little uh, knowledge of what i have gained experience in this world i think it's best to be born in a family where you have just enough just just right amount to fill your bellies there should be a roof on your head and there should be some desire there should be some few things should be unfulfilled in life which will which will motivate you to carry on and uh, you should have a right set of people around you and if you think they are not uh, conducive to your development then you should gradually cut your ties amicably doesn't means that you just completely cut them out of your life means uh, you should uh, be careful the company you keep because it what you watch what what you watch what you hear what you see what you think what you eat because everything is going to have effect on our uh, system day by day moment by moment whether we like it or not so krishna confirms in uh, chapter 7 verse 26 that i know all living entities but me no one knows so all our life we are just all our life or don't know how many lives in the past we have been trying to know krishna and uh, on the 14th i i if i remember correctly in mayapur it was a lecture or was he answering the question and answer and uh, one of the answers was so beautiful i was just reading that just before uh, our session here that's uh, i can't uh, phrase the question completely but i'll give you the answer so you can understand the question so our guru maharaj his holiness jay pataka swami he was saying that uh, this kali yuga is the one which is the golden opportunity of for us which which comes just after the advent of uh, uh, krishna in dwapar yuga in this in this kali in this set of uh, four yugas uh, in this kali yuga after krishna comes in dwapar normally krishna comes in treta but in this set of kali uh, yugas four yugas krishna comes in dwapar yuga and then chaitanya mahaprabhu comes in the kali yuga which which happened just just over 500 years ago and now 10000 years of golden era is about to start i will confirm that when it is and this is the only time for people to strive their best to go back to godhead cuz then after millions of years people will get again this chance and uh, so for example we wanted all the luxuries and all the goodness and all the we were full of passion we wanted to enjoy ourselves and this and that we want every best of everything in life and uh, we did lots of pious activities we did lot of uh, karmas in goodness and uh, okay so we built our credits and and we were granted the heavenly planets the swarg loka so okay we will spend there few thousand years few hundred thousand years maybe we did so many punya karmas and once all the punya karmas get exhausted they are finished the cred we have run out of the credits will be thrown back as humans in on this earth and then we'll have to go through but like it is said uh, it was said by uh, our guru maharaj that this is the golden uh, era 
golden peri period which comes 500 uh, which comes when the, in this uh, kali yuga lord chaitanya appears after krishna and uh, in dwapar in dwapar krishna appears then lord chaitanya in uh, the kali yuga and only in this kali yuga you get the golden era where you are able to say harer naam harer naam only harer naam harer naam eva kevalam kalo nasti eva nasti eva nasti gatir anyatha so this is the only time where just uttering the holy name one is able to go back to godhead that is a simple and straightforward ticket just you book a ticket of the holy name on your jiva on your on your timetable around you somehow you just weave it in such a way your the fabric of your life that lord promises you that you will be given the straight ticket otherwise if you get born after losing the credits in your heavenly planets for example you wanted the heavenly planets you will have to fall back down and there's a millions and millions years of journey then again this set of kali yuga will appear when krishna appears in dwapar and then chaitanya mahaprabhu in kali yuga otherwise in other yugas krishna appears in treta so it's up to us we want to give this one lifetime to krishna sign it and seal it and just say krishna it's all yours use me as you want to it is tough it's a tough call devotional service is a gradual process our guru maharaj was also saying in the answer it's a it's a gradual process it just it doesn't just comes overnight but because we have to get rid of all the uh, nonsense we have collected in our hearts in our previous lives and uh, we uh, we haven't stopped and we still don't learn we still keep on doing the collection of the garbage in our heart we are very good to, <clears throat> and very uh, uh, methodical in about uh, uh, sorry about the cleanliness around us who we are touching who who we are uh, who we are uh, how we are uh, keeping our cells clean and our, our surroundings clean but far as our heart is concerned we just accumulate the nonsense the garbage of bad karmas through our gyan indriyas all the time and of course mind is the king so like bhakti sadan thakur our uh, shila prabhupad's uh, guru maharaj he used to say that when you wake up in the morning with the shoe beat your mind 100 times because your mind is going to say to you no i don't want to do any hari naam today in the name of japa or in the name of reading in the way of reading or hearing lectures or or doing any kind of devotional service to the lord so you have to beat your mind with the chappals he used to say the shoe and before going to bed in the night he says again take a broomstick and beat it up or clean it up again with the broom jhadu cuz that's how our mind is so the best formula i have learned is whatever mind is saying just go opposite is opposite it cuz mind is always looking for shortcuts of of uh, of just tricking you cuz sometimes i think mind is a is a friend of maya devi maya devi has empowered it so krishna is sitting quietly in our hearts with our atma as super soul as parmatma he has put everything around us which can advance us towards krishna but he is also given us a mind sometimes we think he is the king and he is he is our master we forget we just put our super soul and soul on one side and we just listen to our mind but but uh, we all have seen the first first voice which comes from inside the jo pehli awaaz andar se aati hai wo hamari aatma ki hoti hai actually parmatma ki hoti hai wo empowered hoti hai wo aatma ko empower karke bolti hai uske baad jo hamari guesswork chalti hai wo hamari apni ghatiya soch hoti hai 
और हम अपनी वो जो घटिया सोच हमारी जो मानसिक सोच होती है हम उसको उसका अनुसरण करते हैं ना कि अपने अपने आत्मा और परमात्मा की आवाज सुनते हैं जिसको हम इंट्यूशन कहते हैं इंग्लिश में सो नेक्स्ट कृष्णा इज द सुप्रीम एब्सोल्यूट ट्रूथ देर इज नथिंग हायर देन और इक्वल टू कृष्णा ही इज ऑल प्रोवेडिंग बाय हिस्स various energies and he is excellent in all respects the lord says in bhagavad gita chapter 7 verse 7 mattah paratram nanyat kinchid asti dhananjaya mai sarvam idam protam sutre mani gana iva translated as o conqueror of wealth there is no truth superior to me everything rests upon me as pearls are strung on a thread then all great sages declare krishna to be god arjuna declares to krishna in bhagavad gita arjuna vacha param brahma param dham pavitram paramam bhavan purusham shashvatam divyam adi devam ajam vibhum ahustvam rishaya sarve devarshir naradas tatha asito devalo vyasah swayam chayav bravishime this is from chapter 10 verses 12 and 13 translated as arjuna says you are the supreme personality of godhead the ultimate abode the purest the absolute truth you are the eternal transcendental original person the unborn the greatest all the great sages such as narad asit devala vyasa confirm this truth about you and now you yourself are declaring it to me this when we state that krishna is god it is not out of some sentiment or personal bias but because of shabd pramana the evidence of the scriptures not the shabd is written in all the uh lit, the, the so called literature around us but the scriptures which have been sent down from god himself which have been coming from top to bottom the avaroha pant thus it translated it says arjuna uh, you have done the translation thus when we state that krishna is god it is not out of some sentiment but out of the shabda praman now moving on to the expansions of god since krishna the supreme personality of godhead is unlimited and is the complete perfect whole he can expand himself unlimitedly into any number of expansions without in any way diminishing himself he remains the complete whole as before so some someone which is complete will remain complete not like us that if we are complete and if we give some part of ourselves we will will become short short of that that part which we have given away but in krishna in case of the lord this doesn't apply because he is the supreme he is unlimited he is perfect he is completely whole so he always remain whole among the unlimited expansions of krishna are innumerable ones that are equal to him but possessing variegated forms like rama narsimha narayan etc these latter expansions are the same as the original krishna but the only difference is of form and mood i'll repeat these latter expansions like rama narsimha narayan are the same as the original krishna but the only difference is of the form and the mood so they are equal to krishna but the difference between um, the difference between them and krishna is of the form of the appearance and the mood they are all god the one supreme lord krishna manifests himself in many forms same as and equal to himself therefore we should consider all of them to be simultaneously one and different from krishna who is their origin i'll repeat therefore we should consider all of them to be simultaneously one and different from krishna who is their 
origin. And the wonder is that even though Krishna expands himself into innumerable equals of himself, he remains the supreme personality of Godhead. Even after dividing himself or distributing himself into various forms, equal forms actually of himself, he still remains the supreme personality of Godhead. This is spiritual mathematics. One minus one equals one, which only is true in the case of Krishna, in, in case of the spiritual world. This is a very important theological concept. In the Brahma Samhita, Brahma explains that Krishna is like the original candle that lights up many other candles. In other words, he is the original source and fountain head of all other forms of the Lord. This is also substantiated in the great scripture, the Srimad Bhagavatam. Ete chamsaha kalaha pumsaha Krishnas tu bhagavan swayam indrari vyakulam lokam mridyanti yuge yuge. This is the famous verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, third chapter, 28th verse, translated as all of the above mentioned incarnations are either plenary portions or portions of the plenary uh, plenary portions of the Lord. But Lord Sri Krishna is the original personality of Godhead. All of them appear on the planets whenever there is a disturbance created by the atheists, the ones who don't believe in God. The Lord incarnates to protect this, the theists his followers. He has to come to protect his followers. This is the vachan or the word of Lord that he will always protect his devotees. All these expansions are simply to help the original supreme personality of Godhead Krishna enjoy different variegated tastes or the rasas of love with his devotees. All these wonderful spiritual forms of God reside eternally along with their devotees in the spiritual world, the kingdom of God, called Vaikuntha. Kuntha means pain and Vaikunt, where there is, which is devoid of pain or misery, that is Vaikunt, which is far beyond the material universe. We will learn more about this in the theme material nature, that is Prakriti and time, which is Kal. Lord Krishna has 10 primary incarnations starting from like you, you must have seen the famous uh, picture as in the top upper left hand corner you will see Matsya Avtar, the fish incarnation then you see the Kurma the tortoise incarnation then you see Varaha that is the boar incarnation is the third one fourth incarnation is Nirsima Dev, the half man, half lion, who helped Prahlad Maharaj and vanquished Hiranyakashipu. Then Parshuram, sorry, then Vaman Dev, who just uh, measured the, with one step the whole of the Prithvi and one with one step he measured all of the Akash and then there was nothing left than Vali Maharaj. He had to put his head forward. And this is how the Lord tested him. And then it was Ramchandra Ji, the seventh avatar. The eighth avatar was Balaram. Ninth avatar was Buddha. And tenth avatar was Kalki. So I am a bit confused here that it says in here that 8th avatar was Balaramji. And we we actually just, when we look at that picture, we always say this, that 8th avatar was Krishna. So interesting. I'll have to follow this up with you later. So before we had Buddha avatar as the ninth, and now at the end of the Kali Yuga, we will have the Kalki Avatar, which, who will come on, the, on a horse uh, somewhere in south, southern India, he will appear. 
As Lord Krishna declares in the Bhagavad Gita, Paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya chidushkritam dharmam dharma samsthapanarthaya sambhavami yuge yuge. This is chapter 4 verse 8 translated as to deliver the pious and to annihilate the miscreants as well as to re-establish the principles of religion. I myself appear millennium after millennium. But the most important reason for the descent of God into this world is to give pleasure to his devotees and to attract the minds of the people of this world towards him by performing many sweet wonderful pastimes. In other words, to give the nectar of Krishna consciousness or love of Godhead, which we call in Hindi Krishna, Bhav, Bhavanamrita to everyone. So now we understand why we celebrate the festivals. It's a way Lord has filled our calendars of, of our lives so that we get a chance to be more attracted towards Lord on those certain days. We, though we have to be attracted to him all the time, but those days we can have some special attractions like this year on Ekadashi. Prabhupada said, uh, uh, your main business should be not just to chant 25 rounds, but to chant as much as you can. Or as you can. If, you, if you can avoid the other business, please do like he says. But if you can't, you have to, because uh, that's, that's the, how the world has been designed. The world doesn't dance around us. Sometimes we have to dance around the world. So, have I missed something? I think I'm, I jumped one page. I'm sorry. Yes, I should have mentioned the descent of God. So, I will just read the, uh, the paragraphs which I missed. The descent of God, from time to time, the various forms of the Lord discussed above descend from Vaikunt into the material world. Then they are called avatars, those who descend or the incarnations. So those who descend, they are called the avatars or the incarnations. We should know these avatars to be fully spiritual and the Supreme Lord himself. Ignorant people, however, often mistake them for ordinary beings of this world because these avatars act, speak and live as if they were a part of this world. The birth and activities of these avatars in this world are called leelas or pastimes or sports performed by them according to their own sweet will. We should not compare their birth and activities to ours. This is the biggest murkta, like they say in Hindi or the, or the audacity or the the God knows what to say that we do. We just start comparing our birth with the birth of the God, our activities with the activities of the God, just because they appear in the in in a very uh, normal circumstances sometimes when we read them. So we should never compare their birth and activities to ours. In the Bhagavad Gita, Bhagwan says. Janma karma cha me divyam evam yo veti tatvataha tyaktua deham punar janma naiti maam eti so Arjuna chapter 4 verse 9 One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not upon leaving this body take his birth again in this material world but attains my eternal abode O Arjuna This was the translation Each avatar has a particular mission and form which is described in the scriptures However, in general, the avatars come for the following purpose: to establish dharma and give knowledge to the God, knowledge of God, sorry, knowledge of God and his activities, then to protect the devotees and saintly persons, and lastly to destroy the miscreants who are mischievous and cause disruption in the peaceful and orderly function functioning of the world. And uh, we had said the shloka 4.8, the famous one. Paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya siddhushkritam dharma samsthapanarthaya sambhavami yuge yuge to deliver the pious and to annihilate the miscreants as well as to re-establish the, principle the principles of religion. Lord says I myself appear millennium after millennium. And like he says most important reason of God's descent is 
in this world is to give pleasure to his devotees and to attract the minds of the people of this world toward him by performing many sweet wonderful pastimes because this is what attracts us what do we do in in our free time most of us some of us like to get absorbed in some fictional reading or watching some fictional movies because we just love the tales we just like to go in uh, uh, like to get transported into a different world than our own because uh, grass always seems greener on the other side to us so what best to uh, drown yourself is other than the pastimes of the lord so give the nectar of krishna consciousness of lord to everyone so i will leave my reading now for now and uh, will continue tomorrow with it it is so brilliant i wish there was more hours in the day and we had uh, more uh, brains to understand and, and and gross ourselves in it and we could we could do longer but i think i've done it long enough mm. when i started this i used to i was thinking that i'll keep it to 20 minutes but it's it's okay just hear as much as you can and uh, just 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 don't try to leave it at any point in your life just just think about lord just say lord's names cuz try everything else nothing is going to help us this is the sure prescription lord has given for all of us for this life for the miseries of this life this is only going to cure us of our miseries and we have to just hold tight to the holy name hold strongly and just try our best our mind is going to play tricks with us all the time our uh, uh, jnana indriyas are going to disturb us and on top of it are this the temporary body which we think is the most dearest thing to us uh is going to betray us all the time is going to annoy us with this or that trouble of its but we have to look after our body like uh, prabhupad always said to his disciples that your first dharma should be to look after your body because if your body is well then you are able to say the holy name do some service for lord but if your body is not well is not in ship shape is not in a is in is not in tip top form everything is going to be very very monumental task so look after your body then you can say the holy name serve the devotees of krishna serve the lord serve the guru and goranga and slowly inch towards the goal of life which is to get reunited with the lord who is who is uh, sitting with each and every jiva in his heart as the super soul as the parmatma so always keep in your mind the two arm formed beautiful form of krishna which is sometimes in a tribhanga form as well bent at three places with the flute in his hands this is the form we have to keep in our in our minds parmatma the four armed one is in our hearts and never get discouraged by the temporary problems of this world whether it is from our body whether it is from our surroundings whether it's from the nature they will be there because this is the way krishna has designed our uh, abode for us this is our abode the the dharti uh, is it, is designed like this aur isme takleef aayengi aayengi hum chahe na chahe humko in inke sath hi rehke apna bhagwan ka naam lena padega aur hamari zindagi as isi prakar hi chalti rahegi bas इन्हीं शब्दों के साथ मैं आपसे कल तक के लिए विदा लेती हूँ और हम कल फिर मिलेंगे हरे कृष्णा वाच कल्प धरूप्यश्च कृपा सिंधुप्य एव पति नम पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम इफ आई हैव ऑफेंडेड एनी वन विद माय वर्ड्स और विद एनी ऑफ माय थॉट्स और माय थॉट प्रोसेस 
please forgive me and uh, I, I shall pray for all of you and uh, you also keep me in your prayers so that we can together get through this ocean of material life the Bhavasagar Hare Krishna <laughs>